Ujia Messiah, Villa Rosa, Brooklyn Dark Entertainment, Southside, Northside, everywhere, everywhere. Man. That's right. So yeah, um, what gave me the idea to reach out to you was I saw this most recent one that you did, the one on the bridge. Or was that the most recent one that you did? Yeah. Yeah. And she was right. Can you tell me about the Messiah Mondays? What gave you the idea? How long you been doing it? Just generally, what's good with it? First of all, I'm glad you like that one because rapping about mental health over a Kanye beat, walking over a bridge where people literally jump off that motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? It was, that was dope. It meant a lot for me to hit that one. I just came up with it because um, it came from like a couple weeks of just being off my square. Um, literally smoking squares, eating donuts, not working out, you know what I mean? Just kind of just let myself go. I was a fat bitch. <laughs> and um, and no lie, I had a homie that I known for a long time. He was like, man, you look chubby on Instagram, man, right? Like my nigga, I've known this nigga for like 30 years. And I was like, oh, you little nigga. <laughs> just just because you had a six pack. My wife was like, tell him to shut up just because he had a six pack since he was six. Because, you know, an African nigga, you know, African niggas be like this, right? So um, I was like, he's right, though, you know? Let me get in the gym, let me work out. Okay, we're going to be here for a while. What can I do? And I like to talk my shit, most importantly, right? I got a lot of shit I want to say in a constructive way. That's why I try to do it, you know what I'm saying? But I also... I also had to keep my my head together, and that was a way for me to still get my my stuff out there and to challenge me and keep me ready and keep me sharp. So, cause you know, once you get fat physically, you are gonna get fat mentally, and spiritually, and last thing you want to do is be a fat, sloppy spiritual person. You can be fat physically, but you don't want it to start taking over your mind with the sodium phosphates and the carbon the carbon cholesterols. So I just tried to play a game with myself and then I was like, let me see how long I can go. And there was a couple times I wanted to stop just because you, sometimes you feel like you're falling on deaf ears or um, shit, I killed it enough. You know what I mean? But no, people was like, man, no, dude, dude, fuck it. I got, you know, homies in my DM, white people. My white homies, my black homies, my people from overseas homies, you know, um, hitting me like, man, keep it up, man. You know what I mean? So it was a lot of encouragement from people to just keep trying to, um, because I got my certain people that that are in my head that I want to impress that I know. So I'm trying to impress myself and make them laugh and make people smile and shit. So, or piss people off. So that's how I came about. Yeah, yeah, and the lyrics underneath it are, are super key too. It like really helps uh, helps engage. And so yeah, I'm glad I'm glad to see those. I hope they yeah. keep coming too. Um, secondly, uh, Minnesota hip hop. Uh, do you have any comments on the current state of hip hop in Minnesota, or where you would like to see it go? We can kind of jump into that, but let's, let's talk about like right now. I've been in my cave, man. You know what I mean? Like as far as it's hip hop in general had to slow down figure out ways you got Jim Jones the weatherman on the Vogue TV you got you know people generating income in all different ways people are trying to hustle rappers and have them pay on mixtapes so people had to think of new ways to engage with their fans as far as locally you see people online and whatnot. you know what I mean but other than that there's no engagement I can sum it up in three words. Shit, it ain't nothing. But I mean, it's just, it's just, 2020 is a rap for local hip hop in Minnesota. You know what I mean? You gotta get your shit off and you gotta become an artist and you gotta get in the weight room and build and, and come out with some shit and turn people's heads right now because right now, locally, let's, I mean, the scene is a rap. Like, there's so many scandals, accusations, and toxic masculinity. And dudes fucking up, fucking it up, and you know, with the flip side, it's a lot of cool shit because it's the accountability, and it's also getting the suckers up out of here. But you know, do some push-ups, learn a new language, and pick up a skill. You know what I'm saying? So all that local shit, it don't matter right now. And I was, I, I addressed that before 
even this was happening that, that the, the, the focus on the local shit is a waste of time because nobody gives a fuck. We're all either family, we're all, whether we're family or, or, or foe, we're all counterparts into the same situation. So all we can do is just cheer people on and keep it moving. But how many times is your homies gonna buy your record? You know what I mean? Like you gotta, you gotta branch out. Thanks. So um, let me ask this though. Um, I know it's Messiah Mondays and, and you wanna be in your cave. One reason I do this is to highlight you know what I'm saying? And not everybody has not everybody has your perspective. Yeah. Um, and so if there is anybody or anything that you would like to highlight, I would love to hear about that. And if not, uh, we can talk about what's coming for you in the future or twenty twenty. Oh no, yeah, if people yeah. see Blood Smoke Body put out a project, Maria Issa put out a project with Yemi. They got fire ass projects that's out. Um Big Wiz and Tech finna pull out an album, you know what I mean? I kinda got geek seeing that. I like I like to see people that's working, up and coming, um, or or veterans in the game. You know what I mean? Oh, so it's it's a lot. I mean, on the positive side, because you gotta stay positive. Right? <laughs> try to. I mean, you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, you try to. You know, I, remember, I tried to make some. I tried to say something positive about slavery <laughs> earlier. <laughs> but um. I see people working, I see people trying new shit. But you know, as far as locally, my niggas is out of town killing them. Like our, our hooks, Bobby Raps, you know, niggas had to get up out of here to do their thing and they're fucking killing them. And they're still, they're still local, but they're making major moves and putting shit out and getting placements and whatnot. So it's a good thing for the city right now. Respect. Despite. El Pandemica. Mm. And the uprise, you know? Mm hmm. Um, yeah, man. Uh, sometimes it's better to be in the moment, but if you do have a, a vision of the future that you'd like to share, that would be my last question. Well, personally, I've enjoyed this time. I've enjoyed everybody having to take a step back, reevaluate the situation, and I see nothing but good coming out of this, you know, in the next two to five years. I mean, I'm, I mean, from now to the next five to 10 years to the next 50 years, because the seeds being planted now are gonna last lifetimes because people are understanding working for $20 an hour ain't gonna cut it. And you have to be, you have to outsmart what's going on and generate income in other ways and I see a whole lot of people close to me coming up with new ways and ideas and willing to do different things and what it takes to make sure that when this shit happens which is going to continue to occur America is now a third world country soon to be a fourth world country has there ever been a fourth world country so a fifth world country so now now it's all about ownership you know the talk around town is ownership cut out the middleman get yours buy property and i think it's nothing but greatness for the future for a lot of you know people of color because the shit fell but let's be honest niggas is used to the shit falling we don't give a fuck about it falling welcome to well you know so this is right up our alley you know what i mean this is perfect for people to come and get the fuck up and, 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 and level up, man. So, 2021, 2022, the conspiracy theorist inside of me says that there's gonna be a worse pandemic coming, but the, but the optimist and the hero says that we are gonna save the world, all of us. You know, we're all heroes. And we're gonna take back the, the mental lapse, you know what I'm saying, which was Black people are this, black people are that, black people are this. What's coming to light is no, we all in this together. And y'all set niggas back a while, so now you gotta step down and we gonna, you know, we ain't having that shit no more. And I think we all on the same vibe. You know, mentally and financially, man. You know what I'm saying? People is trying, now it's trying, now it's time to come up. You know what I mean? If police stops are 80% down in Minneapolis, that's hustler's golden there. It's time to go, baby. Get in your car and move it. 
not condoning anything illegal. I'm just saying, now is a great time for people with ambition. And who ain't letting preconceived notions and bias and what they think about other people fuck with their heart and with their mind. And they're going about this the right way and leaving all the bias shit out the window. Dudes gotta stop acting like douches and fucking pricks and misogynistic pieces of shit. We all gotta take accountability for that and white people gotta stop tripping. You know, this ain't your shit. This is native land. Mm. Stop peeing in the lake. Mm. That's it though, right? Staring at the city. Yes, sir. Smooth job Messiah and I'm staring at the city, baby.